Today we are going to be talking about these ground nesting yellow jacket nests and you can see by this picture this particular one's the size of two basketballs. This, this thing was huge. It was in a valve box. The nice thing about them is they usually have one entrance and one exit so they're pretty easy to deal with if you do it right. And here's the little critter that we are going to be dealing with, the uh, yellow jacket. These things are nasty. These things want to kill you and sting you, and trust me, they really hurt, and they are uh, very aggressive. So in the past, the approved way to deal with them is this product called Apicide. You would find the hole in the nest, and you would squirt this, this powder in, and yeah, they'd come running out covered with powder and still try to kill you. So uh, how is the best way to deal with them? Well, first of all, getting into your bee suit. So this is something that requires uh, a safety precaution of a bee suit. And here Ricky is hopping in the bee suit, uh, making sure that he has his uh, feet covers on because these things will try to get you particularly around your hands and your ankles and your face. That's where they uh, try and, and get the most. So it's very important that we have our safety equipment in place. And it's important that you have somebody else help you to make sure that there are no openings in your suit that uh, they can get through. Very important that you uh, make sure everything is sealed. And of course, it's always better to do things in tandem, but if you have to do it by yourself, that's fine. So here we are suited up and ready to go get these little critters. It's important you have your gloves. And the other tool that you're going to need is a vacuum, a wet dry vacuum. And you can see here is Ricardo in his suit, and he's got a couple of these uh, electronic wands. And they're actually very good for trying to hit some of those critters that are flying around uh, trying to buzz you. So caution tape is one of the important pieces of safety equipment we will need. We need to put this up around the area to kind of keep people out, keep them away so nobody gets stung. So we are going to need a shop vac, like I said earlier. Uh, doesn't really matter the size as long as we have a um, you know gallon or so uh, shop vac that uh, has plenty of extension cord. Make sure you bring uh, extra extension cord if you want to be able to reach the area you're going to go to. So we open up the shot back. We're going to put a couple of inches of water in the bottom. And then we're actually going to add some detergent, or here he is adding some GP forward. And the reason for this is uh, these little critters, once they get in there, they could actually ride on top of that water. What we want to do is we want to break the tension of the water, uh, add some kind of a surfactant, and that's why we're adding this soap. I am all suited up and ready to go. Does this suit make me look fat? Oh, we've got our caution tape up, and we have our vacuum filled and ready to go, and we're in our safety equipment. Now we're going to take this nozzle, uh, and we're going to put it up to as close as we can to the opening of the nest and turn it on. And then we're going to try and either tape it in place or, or use some blocks, whatever, to hold it into place because you want it held there so it can start, you know, sucking them up. And then stand back and watch. Turn this thing on and watch, and you'll see that they start coming out. They start swarming around that tip there so they can hear this noise. And the main noise that they're hearing is the suction from the vacuum. And they'll fly around this area looking for something to sting, and they get close to that noise, and closer and closer, all of a sudden, whoop, they get stuck right up. It's actually kind of funny when it happens. But you'll want to run this for half hour, 45 minutes, even up to an hour. And just observe and watch and make sure that they are coming in through the vacuum. Also, you want to make sure there's not a secondary nest nearby that, uh, that could also be a problem. But we haven't run into that problem yet, thank goodness. So here we are. We are running this thing for uh, about 45 minutes and observing. And then we'll shut it off for a few minutes and see how the numbers are for reducing uh, the amount that are flying around. Keep in mind that there are some workers out there that are going to come back to the nest and uh, they'll get caught up the well. that This is a process that pretty much takes uh, all day long. So you run it for an hour or so, uh, come back, kind of look at it, uh, shut it down for a few minutes and then turn it back on. And do this a few times during the day. And you could even do it into the evening as long as you make sure to bring the equipment in at the end of the night. You don't want to have that sitting out there. But we could at this point, we could remove this nest, we could dig it up if this was in say a soft soil or um, 
something something like a valve box. But this particular one, you can see, it's probably underneath the concrete. So the best thing that we would be able to do is, of course, remove these numbers uh, over a period of a day or so. And then we could go in with some apicide powder and hit that nest, and that would destroy the larva and the eggs that are in there and make this, this nest uh, it would completely neutralize it so they couldn't use it anymore. So that would be the uh, worst case scenario. And sometimes we don't even have to do that. We are able to run uh, this uh, for a day, day and a half, and they're just done. The drop is just in there. So that's the easiest way to remove these, uh, these critters. It's a very safe way to do it. We've had no, no problems as far as people getting stung and whatnot because we are, of course, we have the uh, safety equipment up, the uh, uh, caution tape, and it keeps people out of there for the most part. And you can see at this point we have used no pesticide. Yay for us. Now, what's going to happen when we open up that, uh, that tank bank? And you don't want to just let it sit for days on end because it will stink. So. Uh, when you're done using it, just go ahead and open it up and look at all those. Down in the bottom, that black area, those are thousands of them down in there that are dead. You can see this is a very effective way of doing it.